Testosterone is not guilty for causing prostate cancer. This is what the experts have shown us uh, in the last couple of years, although this is still controversial. If you start off looking at the history for testosterone relating to prostate cancer, you have to go back to a study in 1941, the classic study by Huggins and Hodges. In this study, they demonstrated by reducing testosterone levels by physical castration of men that had metastatic prostate cancer, it improved the outcomes in that type of prostate cancer. In addition to this, they demonstrated that by giving testosterone to men, they progressed prostate cancer. Okay, so it's, it's interesting that that's the start of the history and since the 1940s up until probably 10 years ago, um, this was not questioned and the thought was in the medical community that androgens, testosterone, um, will cause prostate cancer. And even today, uh, many men come to see me as an expert in TRT and they say, my doctor doesn't feel comfortable giving me testosterone or he's told me specifically that testosterone will cause prostate cancer. So that was the beginning. Where are we now? <clears throat> Of course, with evidence-based studies, we have to take a look at, there's multiple studies, by the way, now, multiple studies, many very well done studies uh, have been done, and I'm gonna present and discuss just two of these in a minute, because uh, in, in my opinion, doing the research, I find that these are probably the most well done, although it needs to be noted that there are no randomized, double-blinded, perspective running forward studies regarding replacement testosterone and prostate cancer. It just has not been done. And in addition to that, there are really no good studies done currently in a prospective manner, randomized, double-blinded on testosterone at all. As you've seen in my other videos and social media posts for coronary artery disease and so on and so forth. It is interesting that 2017, there were the testosterone trials came out and they did show there is proof that testosterone um, causes bones to get stronger for men. And these are men that are 65 years and older. So remember, it, these details are very important in the studies uh, and increased um, red blood cells and improved anemia on men that were anemic. And the two studies that, in my opinion, uh, we should focus on and the recent, which is the British Journal of Urology International, published in 2017, and a very interesting and very thorough, uh, less known trial uh, article is Dr. Ramasamy, and he's actually uh, Department of Urology, New York Presbyterian Hospital, uh, Cornell Medical College in New York City, <clears throat> very well-established medical facility. Um, testosterone placement in prostate cancer, in the end of the day, um, this study shows that there, again, is no support for an increased risk of men diagnosed with hypogonadism undergoing replacement testosterone of varied types, uh, picking up a new incident prostate cancer. So <clears throat> that is the data, and that is the evidence where we are today. And even the recent 2018 endocrine society guidelines also reiterate that there is no risk for hypogonadal men to consider and think they're going to take testosterone and therefore develop prostate cancer. Now, th those are statements from the experts. <clears throat> what I have to say about this is that's good. Uh, some men Obviously, if you live long enough, most men actually will have prostate cancer. It's interesting. That data comes from longitudinal studies, uh, retrospective studies, and observational data. That's very good. If a man lives long enough, and these are men that do not have had experience with replacement testosterone. So when you look at all this, there's another character 
we have to bring into the mix, it's Dr. Abraham Morgenthauer, who comes up about 10 years ago with a concept called testosterone saturation. And paradoxically, a protective model where men that are on replacement testosterone have lower, indeed, prostate cancer incidence. And again, I'm not a urologist, I'm not an expert in prostate cancer, <clears throat> so I have to be very guarded on what I say. For today, we don't know. When a man is diagnosed with hypogonadism, and the facts in this country right now are that only 5% of men that are hypogonadal, and these are estimations, are receiving treatment. So we're crudely under treating men that should be treated suffering with hypogonadism. But when you do treat these men and you diagnose them and you manage them, everyone knows what I say. There are two things you have to watch out for. There's of course the coronary artery disease aspect, which you can see the video on that where I interviewed Dr. Brett Nolan and we reviewed the data in detail as he's an expert cardiologist and he helped us do that. And that was incredible, very eye-opening. Now we have to look at the prostate and no one's arguing, no one argues this day and age, and I'm talking about urologists, primary care doctors, endocrinologists, none of these expert physicians that are involved with treating men for hypogonadism are going to say that testosterone causes prostate cancer. So that's good, and there's the data. Let me talk now about my experience over the last 15 years or so treating men with androgens that are either hypogonadal from organic causes or hypogonadal from anabolic steroid use. So I've treated, <clears throat> again, these are crude, crude numbers. I, of course, have all this data in the computer, and I'm starting to take a look at it now. I would say that I've seen less than 3% prostate cancer in these men. It's about 3% or lower, maybe even lower, maybe 1%. It's very interesting who comes to me though, so when I evaluate my data, that has to be, obviously it's very biased, you know, why men come to me. Um, these are men that are paying decent retainers. So again, these are not lower social economic status men. These are men of means. Uh, that's, all these biases will have to be looked at when I'm evaluating my data now, who, the, who these men are. And about half of them are steroid using men. So these are men in their 20s, even younger, that are self-administering androgens. How does that affect the prostate? So I've never seen a case of prostate cancer from a steroid user. Never. Who have I seen? And who are these, 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 these small numbers, thank God, that I've seen for men that I've either diagnosed with hypogonadism and then subsequently with having prostate cancer? Because if I diagnose a man with prostate cancer first, which is a primary care doctor, I've diagnosed many men with primary uh, prostate cancer. I then would never put a man on testosterone once I've diagnosed him with prostate cancer. That would be, again, even today as I review my conclusions in the end, that's still going to be an error. Uh, there are some what I call cowboys out there. Uh, I don't think there's many of them. Uh, urologists that say that a man has actual Gleason 6 prostate cancer and hey, that's okay. You know, you can give him testosterone angina replacement and he'll be okay. There's no data to support that it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow that. We're going to get to that in a little bit here. I, that's, that would be dangerous and that would be, that would be unethical. I think that would be wrong. Um, can you remove and deal with the prostate cancer and then administer when a man has, say for an example, a year of undetectable PSAs and he's given a green light from a urologist, his urologist, yes, we do it all the time. I want to get that word out. If you're a man, you have prostate cancer and you're a status post a, a prostatectomy and you have undetectable PSA levels, please see a doctor and consider going on testosterone because that world has changed. We don't leave men that are already have been, have been uh, at least surgically corrected uh, and after a period of time of having evidence of not having a recurrence of prostate cancer because it was isolated to the prostate gland, not metastatic, 
those guys, they do great. I have a bunch of them right now. And I manage them with urologists, as you, as you can imagine. So uh, the testosterone saturation model is not very clear what the real mechanism is. In some respects, my understanding is that if before you develop prostate cancer cells in that stromal tissue of your prostate gland, that it somehow sets up a competitive inhibition on, on that tissue. And again, Dr. Morgenthauer is discussed in more detail. It's, it's in pause right now. I don't see any more research on that. And I don't know how, what's going on, but I could tell you that men in my clinic that are some of the age of, say, 35 to 65 that are on testosterone for upwards and over a decade or even two decades or three decades, they don't have prostate cancer. And I could tell you that screening PSA numbers on men on testosterone, this is replacement testosterone doses, I see an initial increase in the PSA numbers, as we expect in the literature because the stromal gland picks up a bit and grows a slight bit from the androgen receptor, uh, testosterone receptor. Obviously, there's a conversion. You know, there are receptors in the prostate for DHD. And we see an initial increase in some men, not all. And then we see a flattening and a stabilization of the PSA. And that's brilliant news. And I'm happy, very happy to report that. And I've been doing this for over 10 years. So... My opinion is that testosterone, if it's administered to the proper man who of course needs it, understands the risks and the benefits, and he is watched very closely with digital rectal examinations, and of course PSAs, that's all we have right now. Hopefully in the future we'll have better modalities of, of diagnosing prostate cancer like we do mammography and even MRIs of the breast for women. Hopefully we're gonna get some of these modalities uh, down for the prostate. But for now, we just have PSA and symptoms and a digital rectal exam. So men do well, and this is great news. In closure today, I would say that when a man is worked up initially for hypogonadism, this is a very big piece he has to have his PSA checked, digital rectal exam by any physician, specifically the physician that is prescribing it, or a primary care doctor, endocrinologist, or a urologist. And within six months, he should have a PSA checked. And if the PSA accelerates, which means it's going up equal to or greater than 0 0.35 on the scale once, twice, after you see it say twice, you're going to have to consider seeing a urologist and getting a urologist involved. <clears throat> I've done this over the years and I've picked up, again, like I've said, very small number of prostate cancers. What I think happened in those cases is, and the urologist is explaining this to me, these men had teeny amounts of what are called seeds of malignant cells in the prostate kind of low grade and sleeping, if you will, dormant, but, but they were actually prostate cancer. And the PSA increased when we gave this man androgen. I mean, I've seen this a very handful of times, you know, young, even a man under the age of 50, maybe half a dozen men between 50 and 60. And then of course, more men that I've started on testosterone uh, between 60 and 70. It's definitely an age uh, related increase across those categories like you'd see it in any man that has uh, incipient prostate cancer, it's, it's age related. So you have to watch it closely. A lot of physicians I see coming in uh, from anti-aging facilities and maybe physicians that aren't so vigilant, they're not checking PSAs on men. And I've had a bunch of men come into me over the years, uh, evaluated for TRT, and I find out that their PSA is 12, um, even seven, uh, one gentleman was 80, and so he had he had frank um, uh, severe prostate cancer. Actually, that the, the last gentleman, still to this day, is not sure if it's metastatic or not, and, and we're watching him closely um, with the urologist. So, the good news is, in conclusion, prostate cancer and testosterone appears to be safe. Appears to be no relationship if you don't 
have prostate cancer when you start testosterone replacement. Please be safe. Please talk to your doctors and please continue following me on my social media. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy. Yeah.